Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So can you believe it? We are down to the second to last week of our summer reading program for 2021. So what we're going to be taking a look at today is Tales of New Places. So what that means is all of our books are set in places that aren't here. So they might be set in other countries or they might even be set in a made up world or land. So let's get started so we can see where we're traveling to with these six books. So the first one is the School for Good and Evil. So every four years in the village of Galvadon, two children are taken away in the middle of the night by a person who's only known as the schoolmaster. And they end up being students at the School for Good and Evil. It is there that one of the children will be schooled in the ways of good, honor, and beauty, while the other in evil, darkness, and villainy. Two best friends, Sophie and Agatha, are the ones chosen when the night finally comes, when it's there around. And they find that they are chosen by the schoolmaster. And when they get to the school, Sophie knows that she is destined for the school of good. And Agatha is going to end up for the school of evil. But they find themselves actually being opposite. Like Agatha ends up in the school for good and Sophie's in the school for evil. And they will then be put to test in ways that they never could have imagined. If you love stories that take on traditional fairy tale ideas and turn them on their heads, this one does that. So this is the first in a lengthy series, which is still coming out with new books. So if you love to read a good long series and you need lots of options, then this is a great choice. The School for Good and Evil. Beyond Me. And this book is gorgeous. I, ugh, yeah. So Maya is 11 years old and she's living in Japan on March 2011. So our book starts March 9th, 2011. And then on March 11th of the same year, an earthquake occurs off the coast of Japan, leading to a huge tsunami and then explosions and damages at a nuclear power plant. This novel in verse tells you about this true event through Maya's eyes. You will go during the before, the during, the aftermath of this horrific and life-changing event. Even though she feels hopeless, it is up to her and the other survivors to help everyone they possibly can survive and recover. I highly encourage this amazing historical fiction work. You will go through every emotion possible. You will be left breathless at the end. This is beyond me. The Serpent's Secret. So Kieran Mala, also known as Kieran, is growing up in New Jersey and her parents have always told her that she's a real Indian princess, but she's never believed that. Then her 12th birthday comes and it is then that she comes home from school that day and she finds that her parents are missing and then there's a Rakash or what's called it, known as an Indian demon in the house waiting to eat her. So totally freaked out. She doesn't know what to do. The only way she escapes is when two Indian brothers who are also princes, they come and they save her and they help her flee. Kieran then finds herself in this new place called the Kingdom Beyond, which is an alternate dimension where she learns that her parents are being held captive. She also then learns there that she is indeed an Indian princess and she had a spell over her, protecting her from all these dangers until she turned 12 years old. But now that she's 12, the spell's gone. It's going to be up to Kieran and her new friends to help save her parents before they are eaten by their own Rakosh. So this nonstop action filled with Indian mythology is one that you will not be able to put down. The first in a series, you'll be wanting to know what happens to Kieran every step of the way. You will find yourself immersed in all of the action and adventure. The Serpent's Secret. The Trials of Morgan Crow. So Morgan Crow is 10 years old and lives in the town of Jackalfax in the Winter Sea Republic. She is also known as the girl who is destined to die on her 11th birthday and is blamed for everything bad that happens in her town. When a mysterious and magical man named Jupiter North appears one day though, he takes Morgan to this magical town named Nevermore, where she is safe from this curse that she's gonna die on her 11th year birthday. But it is there that she learns that in order to be safe from the curse, to ward off death, she is going to need to become part of what's known as the Wondrous Society. But 
that's going to be easier said than done because there are only nine spots available and there are 500 tr children trying to be one of the nine and they have to go through a series of four entrance tests. You will be along with Morgan on this crazy and epic journey as she figures out who she is, makes new friends, and figures out how she is unique in her own way. First in the series, you will want to read the others in this magical fantasy, The Trials of Morgan Crow. Becoming Naomi Lee On. So Naomi and her brother Owen have been raised by their grandmother for as long as they can remember. They're, and they're a happy family. Their mother divorced their father and then abandoned them seven years before our story starts. But one day though, Naomi's mother arrives out of the blue and upheaves everything. A few weeks go by, you know, and slowly the truth starts to come out why she is now there. Naomi's mother has a new boyfriend named Clyde. And they want Naomi to come live with them so she can be a babysitter like Clyde's children. This first Graham into action as she's determined not to let this happen. And they are going to get custody of Naomi and Owen. But in order for Graham to be able to get custody, they are going to need to travel down to Mexico to find their father, who is the only person who can help them stay together as a family. This realistic and amazing book takes a look at what people are willing to do to stay together with their family, and it will leave you breathless, and you may even find yourself tearing up a little bit at the end, becoming Naomi Leon. And our last one for this week is City Spies. So if you like a good action adventure spy book, like James Bond-ish type things, this is what you need to read. So 12 year old Sarah finds herself in a ton of trouble when she's caught hacking into the juvenile justice system computers in New York City. But as she's like sitting in detention, waiting for people to question her, this mysterious man arrives and he only refers to himself as mother and he convinces everyone in the room that he is the lawyer and while in reality he's actually a British secret agent and he is recruiting Sarah to join this elite group of spies and she's given a choice she can either go to boarding school in England or she can then join this elite group of spies herself. So Sarah naturally chooses to become a spy. So she soon finds herself training with a group of others her age and getting ready to go on this top secret mission in Paris where it'll be their job to protect a world leader from imminent threat. But that's not gonna be as simple as it sounds. Filled with nonstop action and an amazing and awesome Paris setting, you'll be wishing that you could be a top spy as well in City Spies. So these are just six of the books that we have here at the library that take place in new places, you know, places that are made up or places that, you know, maybe we can add to the bucket list when we want to travel to that aren't here. So we encourage you to come on down to the library, check out one of these, or we can help you find whatever new place you are looking forward to visiting while you're reading. I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new middle grade book spotlight and have a great week.